Hello everybody and welcome to Wowhead Weekly number 175. It's going to be a really interesting show tonight. We've got lots of new imagery to show you as the 8.1 PTR has just hit live. I am Annie or also known as Annie Fuchsia. I'm a full-time streamer on Twitch and play a lot of World of Warcraft. My co-host is as usual the lovely Perculia. Hey everyone, I am Perk, I run Wowhead, so I oversee all the news and the guides and the features on the site, and we have a pretty exciting show with Patch 8.1 because that's when Wowhead does a lot of, you know, unique special data mining and like shows you all the armor and the dialogue, even if it's not, uh, even if the game is not actually playable on the PTR. So we have all that fun stuff to cover. And before we get into the PTR news, uh, we have a giveaway going on uh, in Twitch chat. The prize is a virtual ticket, and you can enter uh, by just typing the keyword BlizzCon, one word, in chat. Oh, virtual so, ticket. That's a yeah. good one. Oh, by the way, I normally don't know what the giveaway is until Perk says it to you guys. So that's exciting. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we might as well start off the show with talking about the virtual ticket yeah. why not so the virtual ticket this year uh you guys may have been uh, keeping track of what's going on on twitter or whatever news you are uh, news outlet you are well of course it's wowhead right you probably read this on wowhead already um, it's on the launcher too it, it's everywhere it's everywhere yeah. it's everywhere uh but yeah one of the most exciting things that have been announced is the classic demo, which will be playable for all virtual ticket holders. So that means at first, the way that it was introduced in the in the show itself or in the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like the little short news clip uh, where yeah. Ian was talking. It, well, yeah, Ian and Jay Allen Brack did this little video five mm -hmm. minutes long talking yeah, about- Yeah, it was what a really short video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the way they presented it, they were like, yeah, you know, there's going to be a classic demo playable. They're on site on the floor. Anyone who wants to can just line up and play it. And for people who are at home who are not able to travel, you guys can try it too. And I think this is the first time they've ever done something like this. Yeah, um, I have lots of questions about that because obviously Wowhead will be looking to data mine whatever is coming up so we can make, you know, a classic site based on it. And I'm curious if... They'll just have those few zones uh, that you can grab data from, or if they'll be like, "Oh, look!" And now with this game, we'll we're data mining all sorts of bizarre, you yeah. know, things. So <laughs> it's like, what's in the box? So uh, I'm curious to see what or what all we will get to data mine. But yeah, if you're at home after the opening ceremonies, you can download this demo and you can play it until roughly November eighth, and then it goes away, mm -hmm. I guess. So it's uh, up live. I think just straight after the opening ceremony and then it's uh, live until like Perk said November 8th which gives a window of what is it five days six days yeah so, yeah it's uh it goes it's not a full six days because it ends at 10 a.m uh, okay okay um mm -hmm. and this isn't all the zones it's only one horde and one alliance zone mm -hmm. so uh you know, they didn't say what zones they were, but one could probably imagine, you know, humans and orcs. Although I guess it, it, would, be, it would be cool if they did night elves with all like the sadness surrounding Teldrassil. Um, that could pull on nostalgia well. Hmm. But yeah, you get access to two zones um, with this virtual ticket prize. Mm -hmm. As, yeah, I think uh, it'll probably be humans and orcs. I think that's the most classic look at things. Yeah, um, especially when you look at it uh, in conjunction with what you get on the live game which mm -hmm. are these alliance and horde, like human and orc themed banners, as well as capes. Yep. Like, you know, just cloaks that kind of look like PvP cloaks. <laughs> I've actually got some uh, cloaks to show you guys here. We can see the alliance one being worn outside in the green. And then we see the horde version right here as well. I, I noticed the horde one has like these chains at the bottom of it. Yeah. It's... I think that looks really cool, actually. Yeah, so my thoughts on this is that, like, the ca the cloaks look cool, but, um, and I'm really happy that, uh, this demo shows that WoW Classic is coming along, that they do have something to show us, but I think, I think it's a bit, like, too much of a change at once to raise the price of the virtual ticket yeah. and then have 
the reward be this demo, which if you play during classic, you're like, okay, but like I've, I've played I, this I don't a care. lot, yeah. you know? And then uh, also take changing it from that Mount Pet uh, expectation, I feel just like a little too much at once. So I'm really happy that the classic demo shows that yes, classic is coming along. And I think that's interesting tech that maybe Blizzard could like give people like a teaser of, you know, a beta, like everyone gets to do like one little thing. I think it's interesting tech they're developing, but I think for the virtual ticket, instead of having like capes and banners, just just give us a murloc, maybe have it be like a low poly yeah. murloc to have it be like a classic murloc. But I just feel that people people react a lot better to pets than, you know, like banners, for example. Oh yeah, for so. sure. I, I think the cloaks are a huge, um, I don't know if I should call it a disappointment. Uh, the cloaks themselves look pretty cool. I'm not a huge fan of the Alliance one. I think the Horde one looks cooler with the chains. But it's definitely yeah. not like, oh, I got this thing from the virtual ticket, you know? And for right. that, I think, like you mentioned, it should have been a pet or a mount or both. And uh, so that is a little bit sad. And it also, like you said, raises a few questions. Like, did are we paying extra because we're getting the classic demo? Classic demo can almost be considered a different game. So it's kind of right. like telling the World of Warcraft crowd, like, yeah, actually, you're not getting anything for your game, but you're going to get this, I don't know, this uh, this Diablo reward. And it's like, wait, that's the wrong game. That's not my game. It's kind of similar to that because not every World of Warcraft player will be interested. But, of course, it's amazing news for everyone who is interested in Classic to, you know, be able to try it out and see how it feels like, if it's as they were expecting, if it's very different. And um, I think it's cool also for Blizzard to actually get some uh, feedback. I think that yeah, might actually be one a, of the I main reasons. Great way, I think it's a great way to be like, oh, so, you know, like, this is how people actually reacted to the old game. Um, I just, you know, I just think pairing that with a more traditional pet would have... Um, you know, mm -hmm. made everyone happy. Also, like, players like me, who is like, okay, yeah, I played Classic for several, you know, years. I was really into it, but when I hear these zones, I'm like, oh, okay, well, like, these are these zones that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what's different here? Yeah. Um, I wonder if there's actually going to be... This is just me speculating if there's some twist or controversial change, which is why they want the feedback. Like, if it's, oh, you know, like, you can pay for Classic with, like, WoW tokens, or, like, this model is slightly different, or we want to see if you, like... I, I just wonder if there's some little tweak that's different and they want to get feedback on that before yeah. going in that direction. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm thinking as well. Yeah. Uh, so. Apparently, yeah, so SAS was mentioning that the price increase is due to more languages and more panels, more streams, etc. So it's actually more content, uh, which, I mean, it makes sense for sure. It's just from like the... Um, you know, the, the regular person, you know, like, let's say there's a person called Bob. Last year he yeah. paid 40, now he's paying 50 and he's wondering what he's getting for it, you know, for playing World of Warcraft. And, uh, you know, he might be a bit questioning of uh, what's going on. Like, what did he pay for? He didn't get anything cooler than last year. If he's not interested in Classic, that is. Uh, but yeah, of course, I mean, you know, there's inflation as well, as you mentioned. So it's very normal for things to become more expensive over time. Um, but I it's... also think another reason maybe mm -hmm. last year was still catching up was uh, Blizzard used to outsource the virtual ticket production to, I think, DirecTV. And I believe they're doing it in-house this year, which is why you get all those little videos leading up to the grand reveal. So okay. there could be a lot more work going on internally on Blizzard's end. And maybe last year was the first year, so they didn't want to charge more and have, like, tech, you know... It, you know, rough things happen because it was their first year. But if mm -hmm. they're trying to do, you know, like, oh, every week you get special exclusive videos and then there's like interactivity things and you get more panels and all the panels mm -hmm. are around until like March of the next year instead of, you know, just two weeks after. Those could all be little factors that add up for a higher quality product. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I feel like the messaging could have been, um, you know, done better for that and you yeah because not just, everyone just, just realizes give, that the quality of things yeah. have gone up if they don't you know read into it right and just give people the, the murloc pet like it's tried and true people love the murloc pet you know theme the murloc pet after whatever, whatever big game's coming up everyone loves the murloc yeah uh, i so. think they could have definitely did it uh, I, I think maybe it was a little bit of a miss there um because or maybe they're an experiment and it's like okay well i I'd be interested to see the data. Like, has this gotten a lot of people to buy the virtual ticket, or are people buying it anyway because they like Demon Hunter Sombra? I, I I would just be curious to see if I don't know. Maybe people really like the cloaks, according to Blizzard's data. Yeah. Yeah, I think 
for example, with the pets, how many versions of Murlocs do we need? Many. <laughs> yes. Or we could have a little, like, I don't know, classic Pepe. He can be, like, one polygon instead of two. <laughs> Wait, does Pepe exist as a pet itself? No, he's, he's just the thing that sits on your head. Right? And the, jo the, the joke is that he's just, like, two circles. He's very simple model. Yeah. So my joke was, like, oh, like, we could have classic Pepe, which is just, like, you know, like, a blob with a few points as opposed mm -hmm. to his circle. Um... But yeah, I know, but Pepe was a BlizzCon reward one year. He was in the Overwatch, uh, he was Bastion, he was BlizzCon Bastion with the Overwatch uh, Ganymede Pepe. Ah, oh, okay. But yeah, I, I think adding a pet would have not taken too much work and would have made people a lot happier uh, for kind of like to keep a similar tradition with the rewards for the World of Warcraft players. I think that could have been very doable. Yeah. And keep so, the increase uh, in price, I mean. Yeah. So, you know, like, make changes over time. I think it's really exciting that the classic WoW tech could mean that maybe when they want to test 9.0, it's like, oh, well, everyone gets to play, like, five quests. Or, you know, you get to play yeah. a Void Elf for, like, 30 minutes. But, oh, if you want to, like, do the full test, you have to sign up for, you know, like... You know, you have to be like a, a real beta tester. Like, I, I can see this tech being used for exciting things. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, and maybe people don't realize there's a lot of work that goes into it. But I feel that if they made an effort to put these live game freebies, that it could have been a more traditional mount or pet. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, I also do want to mention, because I've seen some confusion, that the, the Blizzard post that was made was not a classic WoW post. The first half was talking about the classic WoW demo, but the second half was about the live loot. There are two videos in the post. One is showing off the cloaks and banners. The other one does talk about classic, but it also talks about things like, if you win a Mythic Plus at BlizzCon, you get a collectible. So, oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah I just, that's a cool. Lot of people thought that I need to do that. Like, a lot of people were sort of taking to the extreme being like, oh, like Blizzard only made a classic WoW post. It's like, no, this, this was like, and everything WoW post. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, I, I, that's one criticism I don't think was entirely founded. Like, the post did cover lots of things that were not, it was not just a classic WoW post, mm -hmm. although, yes, it was a focus. Yeah, I feel like everyone who's not interested in classic just became upset because they see too much yeah. information on classic. It's like, how do I make this go away? It's like, right. oh, you know, you can just scroll down a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think yeah, classic WoW was, um, I was very surprised, honestly. I was expecting. Um, well, I guess it's not too surprising since it will only be one zone, so it won't be too much. But my guess was for uh, last year BlizzCon, it was only announced that it's going to happen. So I thought maybe this year what will happen is that they will give a, um, a more of an idea of maybe what year and what month we can expect it. Maybe month would be too much, but at least like confirm right. with us if it's 2019 or if it's going to be later, because it might be like these kind of things actually take a long time. A, a lot of people joke about how, um, oh, it's just, you know, the same game as 15 years ago. Like, why, why do we need to wait so long? Like, just right. put it up, uh, put it up live. But it takes a long time because they, uh, you know, they're most likely not building on the old game they're most likely building on all their you know new sort of servers and uh tech and whatever right. programming that they're wonder, using like they're gonna put this demo out and like what happens if there's a big bug in the demo then what then it's gonna be like i guess it's like stress testing at a yeah you know, we'll get we'll get lots of feedback if oh everyone yeah when subscribing to blizzcon is to try to game out and be like oh look the first quest giver is bugged so it might be a way to get lots of feedback at once if there's all these concerns that, you know, beta for Azeroth and why didn't people catch this on the beta? This could be like, well, not enough people tested BFA. So like, all of you get to give your feedback mm -hmm. uh, on Classic to see if things run smoothly. And maybe the reason why it wasn't just, you know, like you mentioned, like a sort of beta for anyone to go and try it was putting that, you know, little bit of a wall to make it mm -hmm. require virtual ticket just limits the people a little bit to put not too much stress on the servers. I don't know, I guess we'll see. But yeah, I was very surprised to see anything playable. I was just, I was expecting them to give more detailed answers on what is changing and what is not changing. Um, 
especially on things that people know very commonly as bugs if they try to imp or like re-implement any of the bugs to give the classic feeling or if they you know didn't do that if they were planning to balance anything or they're not going to do that like I was expecting more answers of more specifics maybe some imagery to show people like screenshots of the game itself when you know right. when they're testing stuff that's what I was expecting I wasn't expecting a playable demo so I was right. very surprised I'm also, the timing's really interesting because the WoW Diary Kickstarter that we've been helping promote a ton, it closed the day before this was all announced, and it was setting records. It was, like, right behind some Kickstarted version of the Bible. It was, like, the number five most popular Kickstarter for a book. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. I had to think, like, if if the end of that Kickstarter coincided with the classic announcement, I feel like it could have beaten the Bible. It could have set another record. Um so mm. the timing was a little sad just seeing how the Kickstarter ended right before yeah. the classic announcement. Um, but, you know, it still did obviously very well. Set all these records, had like 600,000 in uh, pledges. So it did very well. I just, it seems like just the way the timing worked out just seems Yeah, sad. it could have had a bit more exposure there when the uh, the hype for classic kind of is rebuilt again, which mm -hmm. which, which what these things do, you know? They, they do yeah. rebuild hype and it's... Uh, it's actually very, very clever, I think, uh, to make it part of BlizzCon, to make it playable. I think that's a lot more interesting than seeing imagery and things like that. I just didn't right. think it's possible. And we were all we were all wondering, we were like, oh, you know, they announced, Ian announced 8.1 in this, you know, vlog. Like, so what are they going to reveal at BlizzCon? And it's like, oh, well, I guess there's Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe the demo will focus more on Classic as to the PTR, which maybe will already be playable. I don't know. The PTR is still broken as we <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, that, that that was really exciting news. Apart from the uh, cloaks, we do get something else as well um, in World of Warcraft. Um, another, I guess, what you could say is a, a smaller reward compared to pets and mounts. Uh, but it, it looks pretty cool, though, for people who are interested in uh, banners in the game. You can see these ones. So this is the Alliance banner, and then there is a Horde one as well. And uh, I know the banners are very popular to throw down, you know, as soon as you've killed an enemy or something. So, and I think these banners look pretty or like, cool compared lock to. Like a doorway. <laughs> uh, wait, are they like? Are... Oh, oh, I don't. Could you they know, do that? Like to... I, I wonder. I mean, you, you just have like a wall of banners. Yeah. <laughs> I've never thought about that. No one has yeah. trolled me like that. But that's a very good point. <laughs> But yeah, these banners look pretty awesome to be banners. But yeah, again, it I, it doesn't mean that now I'm happy and I don't want my Murloc pet. I still want my Murloc pet. <laughs> yeah. But just uh, just saying that you know there was a little bit more than just the cloak for World of Warcraft players. Yeah. So uh, besides that, we have a lot of PTR news that we want to dive into. Uh, this was mm -hmm. kind of the big like a uh, eight you know, point one delay for the show. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Last Friday, we had a lot of data mining uh, start. Uh, Ian promised in his little vlog last Tuesday that uh, the PTR would be up in some form by the end of the week. And true to form, they hit the PTR button at the end of the week. And it's really messy and buggy. You can't actually play it, but there was a lot of data that we could glean from it. So uh, this is all from data mining. We haven't actually been able to log on and see what's new. I wonder if Ian will be doing a big reveal for that. But yeah, um, it, this had an unusually high amount of uh, data, cool stuff in it. Mm -hmm. I remember being in bed when all of these things were being announced on Wowhead. I saw it when I was scrolling <laughs> through Twitter and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much there was stuff. A lot. Yep. Yeah. There was. Uh, I guess the first thing that we can uh, show off to you guys are the uh, the new heritage armors or one of them. Um, yeah, this is it's not we don't know if this is, no. but it's related to the one of the heritage armor quest lines. So um, we know that the dwarf uh, scenario takes you to uh, Ul not Uldir, Ulduar, uh, but we don't have uh, data mine one yet, although we have like a sketch of it from Ian's vlog. Mm -hmm. But what we are going to be showing you is uh, we know what the NPCs are wearing in the Blood Elf one, which is a flashback to Arthas attacking Silvermoon and Kalthos making the difficult decision to um, destroy the Sunwell because it was corrupted and, you know, being used um, by the Lich King. So we've got these really awesome weapons. 
And I think that the what the NPCs are wearing are too simple for heritage, but people people are really excited about these weapons. And they're just like, oh my god, I want this anyway. It looks so cool. Yeah, here you can see the armor together with the weapons. So these are worn by the guards, right? Right. So we're not sure if Blood Elves will get them, but it's uh, probably, possibly something similar. Yeah, so for example, in this scenario, there is a step that's like, he he walks the day, break through to the sun well, and then a prince's decision, defend the magisters during their ritual. So these NPCs could be part of the ritual to... Um, you know, explode the sun well, which would then kill, you know, the minions of the Lich King and, um, you know, deprive them of a source of, you know, corrupted magic for their plants. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, obviously is a very hard choice with the sun well being such an important part of the, you know, elven culture. Yeah. So, uh, and we actually get to see Kalthos before he was all corrupted in Burning Crusade. Like, we have a model of him with his orbs, but the orbs are fire, not fell at this point. Uh, so it's, you know, very exciting stuff. Mm hmm And I think it will help explain people that, you know, if you're like, if you're a WoW player and you're fairly new, you might not understand that, like, Blood Elves are a group of the High Elves, and most of them died in this, you know, battle with Arthas and Sylvanas' history, all this stuff. So, uh, I think it's, I think this is, a, like, an elegant way to let people experience the lore. There are, you know, chronicles, there are the in-game books talking about it, but not everyone likes to read, so experiencing it, I think, is um, pretty good. And definitely, important. definitely, yeah. I think there's a large portion of World of Warcraft players who never do anything outside of the game itself that is related to the game. So, um, yeah, the, the more of the content which is in the game, the more people will be aware of the lore and everything. Yeah. So this next topic is pretty interesting. Yeah. We have, yeah, Night Warrior and Night Elf customization options, which are based on Taranda's new model. So Night Elves, if you complete an achievement uh, to do the Taran's Ascension questline, you can unlock a special skin tone and midnight blue uh, eye color. And they look really angry. And yeah. like they mean business. Yeah. And Tur Turan's model as well has all these midnight blue gems on it, and her eyes are darker, and she's she no longer has heels. She her hair <laughs> hair is back in um, braids. You know, no fancy hairstyle and tiaras. Mm -hmm. And uh, the night warrior is an aspect of Elune. So you know, no no one's going evil here. This is this is another aspect of Elune. Uh, and in this uh, scenario. Uh, Taronda does this special uh, ritual to ascend into the Night Warrior, and then apparently after that she has some sort of face-off with Nathanos Blightcaller and the Forsaken. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people really like this, and because the Night Warrior is about, you know, honoring the dead and the fallen, this could almost be seen as... I'm most picturing a movement similar to the, you know, no shoulder, no honor type thing, where it's like, oh, you know, have the dark eyes in remembrance of the fallen at Teldrassil type deal. Mm -hmm. um, as like maybe a thing players will embrace to, you mm -hmm. know, pay respect that way. Yeah, because I was actually going to ask you, like, what, what is, what does it mean? You know, what, what does it mean becoming or ascending, becoming a night warrior? So it's, uh, it's not necessarily something dark. I mean, it's, it's more like the vengeful part of a loon, but it, it, yeah, it's an aspect of a loon, and it's actually referenced in an archaeology item um, talking about the different aspects of a loon, like the white lady, mm -hmm. um, as well as um, you know the night warrior. Um, okay. So it's it's not like oh, Taranda has like become corrupt in the void. It's um, well, yeah, I don't know, maybe something's up with a loon, but yeah, this is this is another part of a loon. So if anything, she is becoming closer to a loon or taking on one of the aspects of a loon. Okay, yeah, that, that's really cool. I can't wait to see more of that with Taranda. Yeah, uh, I don't think we had this in the slideshow, but Malfurion also has an updated bear form. Uh, he looks. Well, Taranda looks badass, and he looks cool, but he looks very, like, I don't know, he looks very happy, like, he has, like, little ponytails in his bear form. Oh, I I'm didn't sure see this. I'm sure badass in game, but, um, yeah, she, she looks like she means, um, business a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. So, 
That's and what's and under- the quest line is a um, is it a part of is it a scenario that we play through? Yeah, so there's probably going to be like little quests, and then the main quest is the scenario, similar to okay. you know the artifact weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did mind the scenario. There are twelve steps to it, and it's all stuff like go to the ruins of Aberdeen, like find the Eye of a Loon, you know, mm-hmm. investigate the screaming, rescue prisoners, like have this ritual, hunt down a Thanos blight caller, interview. Oh, that this was sad. So apparently he's trying to raise the fallen as forsaken, and Taranda with her powers tries to intervene. So it's very much like, oh. it sounds awfully Lich King if uh, they're trying to resurrect the dead night elves and plays into that really ominous line from A Good War where Sylvanas is talking about her ulterior motive that nobody knows about yet. And it's like, oh, are you just trying to like kill everyone and then make yeah. them into I wonder. Mm-hmm. Which actually reminds me of a few other things which we'll be talking about a little bit later. Yep. Uh, but yeah, maybe maybe going into diving into Taranda now also explains why we didn't see so much of her um, mm-hmm. during the burning of Teldrassil. I I feel like a lot of it is going to come back with the uh, with this um, with this direction of the story. Yeah, we're also we have data mine spells referencing two cinematics related to her, so maybe mm. one of them will have like a flashback where she's like, "Oh, I regret I regret not being able to help my people, and I had to mm-hmm. like survive and." Like, there's one thing I think called, like, Taronda's Darkening, and then one called Taronda's Denial. So, uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure I'm sure she'll be, like, facing some of her regrets. Even though, I mean, the book explains very well why she wasn't at Teldrassil in game, not so much. But yeah. I'm sure that she does have regrets why she, um, you know, could not be there with her people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe we'll see a bit more of her yeah. in first person like that instead. Yeah. Uh, I want to touch on professions briefly. Not as exciting as the Night Elves, but kind of practical. Uh, a lot of the reagents for high-end consumables have been uh, decreased in uh, patch 8.1. So, uh, That's plants, great. for example, have less anchor weed. Uh, mm. Enchants have less umber shards. Um, and there's also things like a scarlet herring lure that are made by leather workers, and it increases your chance to catch midnight salmon. I can finally get the achievement then. <laughs> I've got 41 yeah. out of 50 because you have to fish 50 of them to get the achievement right. and it takes so long. <laughs> yep. Okay, that's awesome. I'll be using that first thing when it's out. Oh, and the amount of salmon required for the feast have been decreased as well. So. Okay. okay. So basically all consumables are cheaper, which is great for people who are raiding. I know a lot of people have been complaining like raiding is so expensive. So it's yep. going to get cheaper. That's awesome. And on top of that, what this also means is that if you haven't actually maxed your professions because it's so expensive, now mm-hmm. you can start considering doing that as well. And also in my case, it, it means that I can start considering leveling my professions on my alts because... Yep. Um, as some of you guys may know, there is an achievement which requires you to be max in all the professions in the game, uh, which has been the case for a couple expansions before as well. Um, and uh, I have not touched my alts yet, but maybe this means that I can finally start touching them. I was actually very afraid of the, you know, those last few points with things becoming right. really expensive. And, and how the Dark Moon Fair was broken, so you can't use that for the few final points. Yep. Uh, but this, uh, this definitely helps. So time yeah. for alt professions. So, yeah, we also data mined uh, a lot of new bosses. This is not complete yet, especially Siege of Zul'dazar. Um, but we can see that, uh, you know, King Rastakhan, as we expected, is going to be in Siege of Zul'dazar. High Tinker Mechatork is a fight. We don't know if he survives. We data mined a model called, like, Escape Mount. Uh, we haven't data mined uh, Jaina yet, even though Ian said he would be, she would be a boss. But what mm-hmm. was really interesting is that we data mined the two bosses in Crucible of Storms, which is the raid after Siege of Zul'dazar, and there's a lot of references to old gods and Nazoth. Mm-hmm. Like, maddening eyes of Nazoth, piercing yeah. gaze of Nazoth, uh, shroud of whispers, Nazoth's whispers prevent the caster from being brought below one hit point, gift of Nazoth, lunacy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like, there is so much gift of Nazoth, hysteria, maddening eyes. Like, there's just so much um, old gods stuff yep. in that raid. And even though they're like, oh, it's a little two boss raid, like Trial of Valor. It's like, no, yeah, I think this is a small going... boss. I mean, it's just a small yeah. raid, you know? <laughs> nope. Yeah. This and then really the important. other boss, there's the 
Unat, Harbinger of the Void, and the Restless Cabal, which has the description, the Restless Cabal is bound to serve Nizoth, mm -hmm. attend to his will. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, th this sounds pretty serious and not good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe maybe and, we'll see Ashara somewhere there as well. Yeah, and it also just... Um, just looking at these things, it's like, oh, Pact of the Restless, they're bound to Nazoth and they're unable to perish. Or, you know, Oceanic Attunement, Trident of Deep Ocean, Custody of the Deep. It's like, we're going to go have this, we're going to sail the seas, have this nice battle, Siege of Zuldazar, have this battle on the high seas. And, oh, look, the next raid apparently is taking place in, like, the ocean. Gee, I wonder if these old gods <laughs> are going to be so thrilled that all, like, the, you know, broken boats and... Yep. You know, dying sailors are now just falling into their nice, you know, maw of madness here. So I'm I'm sure those two things aren't related. <laughs> Us no, having definitely not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And the old guys being like, oh, how tasty, you know, <laughs> nom nom nom, all these people <laughs> yeah. for us. I'm really so. curious what direction this expansion will go in terms of old gods. Like, I'm I'm so curious if it's going to be just constant hinting, constant, like, fighting their... Um, like the what, what was he? He was a servant of Nizoth, or what was he? The boss? Are you talking? Uh, or he sorry, was who just was the boss? Uh, Are you talking about the Harbinger? He oh, he's he's just a boss that works for him. So maybe we'll meet more people, or not people, creatures yeah. that are working yeah. for him, and yeah. then we will realize at the end of the the expansion that we have failed because we focused on fighting each other instead of you know focusing on what's going on right. in the world and, and maybe that introduces a new expansion to do with old gods what do you think right. i mean do you think they'll combine so, it with this expansion so it always feels like reading chronicle and other books there's this whole section on how Cho'Gall was going around and hoping to, to create dissent between the alliance and the horde because he knows that when they work together they are unstoppable mm -hmm. um and it always seems like with these narratives that even if something's bad's happening, we're smart enough to work together to take out the big bad. So I think Blizzard wants to go in a, in a direction where it's like, well, what happens if we're not smart enough to put our differences aside and work together? Yeah. You know, what happens where the faction thing is, even though the old gods keep ex escalating, the faction stuff keeps escalating. So no, we, we won't fight Nazoth together, we'll be too busy killing each other, or the old gods will sort of be orchestrating all this. Um, mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the expansion, um, this might come, they're going to have these sort of storylines going in parallel, and mm -hmm. maybe like the final phase of the final boss will be like all old gods, or you know, Azerite explosion, like Ashara yeah. beating upon our Azerite on our next turn on us, and we're powerless, and oh no, like yeah, now... It We've been it, mm -hmm. bringing all this power and we're bringing it to Nazoth and Ashara and now they're just taking our very nice volatile Azerite necks and now they have like more sort of nuclear horrible things to use against us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it feels like the the direction of the expansion with the focus on killing each other will be bad. Like it feels like yeah. we're going down in a downward spiral of mm -hmm. conflict and trouble without realizing what is happening outside of us, so to speak. And um, it's kind of perfect to see how the all this old god references is lingering everywhere. And uh, we're not, yeah. we don't really see anyone, any leaders or anyone in the game, uh, you know, noticing any of this. Right, or even thinking about the longer implications. Well, m maybe mm -hmm. Sylvanas, like, she's like, oh, like, forces don't like what I'm doing, but... You know, nobody like Saurfang or Jaina or Anduin is like, oh, well, even if we wipe the other side out, um, hey, Ashara's still in the ocean and she hates us. You know, like, yeah. No one seems to be thinking of that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this, no, this is really cool. I'm excited. Yeah. Building upon the uh, Siege of Zuldazar discussion, while the bosses were maybe not that descriptive, the armor got a lot of attention. Because it looks awesome compared to Uldir, which was very much like, oh, look, it's metallic, I guess, and simple. <laughs> Here, I've got a lot of them to show off as well. Uh... Here. We start off with the armor then. I've got the cloth armor to show you guys. And the first one that's showing is actually the mythic version of it, which uh, ah, looks so pretty cool. cool with that lighting effect. 
Yeah, there's so many bones, and it looks, people thought this was like a, a male set at first. The male set's kind of damp, but people are like, oh, like this looks so bulky and badass and like protective. And mm-hmm. I, I really, I mean, cloth and mythic and leather mythic look really cool. Um, so many bones. Uh, it looks like this, really creepy. When they talked about having the raids reflect um, the aesthetics, um, Uldir felt disappointing, even though maybe the weapons looked cool with the armor, but... Yeah, the weapons the, looked cool. Yeah, this this armor really... It's really atmospheric, and it's not... Mm-hmm. It didn't take the easy way out. It's not like, oh, look, it's gold bling, you know, Rastakan's and Delarier. It's like, you know, Rastakan has to deal with Bonsamdi, the Loa of Death, mm-hmm. and... We've lost the Loa of Kings, you know, things are not good for the Zandalari right now. So I, I like how it's getting across this creepy death vibe uh, in there. And uh, if you if you were ever sad as a clothy that you couldn't use an iconic warlock set, th- this looks very warlocky. I was just going <laughs> to say, like, when I saw these sets, they, it felt like another warlock set. Uh, which, as a warlock, I guess, is uh, not too shocking in terms of the <laughs> vibe that it gives. But imagine being a priest and walking right. around like this. <laughs> like, yeah. that's so weird. <laughs> I'm also really excited for this because uh, usually we data mine four armor tints total, and three are LFR normal heroic, just different tints, and the fourth is mythic and it's more elaborate. But looking at these, it's like there are four tints of the most elaborate set so i wonder if we'll be able to get different tints through other means it's, it's just interesting how there's four tints of the elaborate set versus just one tint oh you do you think these might be from the different difficulties and there's no difference between them is that what you mean so i think i think maybe some are from mythic like maybe the purple is from mythic but the blue version maybe you get from I don't know, like Top Mythic Plus or the brown version you get from Tier 3 Warfronts. I, I think it's just mm. interesting how they are taking that point. top tier and they, they didn't need to make different colors. I know a no. lot of people are always like, oh, I really like this version of the set, but I wish it had, you know, Another I wish... Another color. I, right, so it's like, well, maybe, it seems maybe they're trying to do something where... I don't know, you could upgrade your basic tint to the mythic tint in any color. It's, it's just interesting how they have extra colors available when they've never really had them. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I actually didn't think about it. Um, I, my, for some reason, I my, my brain was thinking, oh, four colors is four difficulties. But no, right. it's uh, it's I, I, not. <laughs> then I was like, oh, no, wait, there, there's eight, not four. Yeah, so. because you have the two different versions. And yeah. then the first version is from the easier modes. And then that's the mythic one. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, four different ones from the same raid, or possibly, like you mentioned, different ways to obtain them. Yeah, like different, really difficult ways to get mm-hmm. them. It's not like, like oh, close. Right, it's not like GG, a world quest. It's like, you know, like, maybe mm-hmm. in your cast you get this better piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if you show the rest of them, but yeah, the mail set as usual, not very inspiring, but uh, leather and cloth look really cool. Here, I'm going to give you guys a quick peek of the leather version right here. This is the regular version, and this is the mythic version. It's not as glowy, I noticed. Uh, I don't there's know so if that's... Like, hmm? there's no yeah. room to glow. It's just like, that's, I'm that's wearing, true. like, a dinosaur <laughs> on me. <laughs> I am a dinosaur. <laughs> and then I'll quickly show you guys the male version, too. Right there. Like, I do kind of appreciate how the male helm kind of looks like and Arthas Lich King helm, but bones, and how the boots are the bones, but the the body of it, I'm just like... Yeah, it feels a bit off with that sort of chain yeah. chest. Yeah, I feel like the cloth set almost looks like more of a shaman set than the male sets. Zoom in. Um, I can try to zoom in if I do this. Uh, let's see. If I reset transformation, and then I zoom in like this. Might be a little bit blurry though. If you um, there's a Wowhead post with all this in the show notes, so you can go to that post and then also just like click on the. Yeah, I think that's probably you can better. Z- everyone can just zoom in and because see whichever I, ones you like. Yeah, because I took yeah. pictures of them, they become very blurry. So yeah, uh, let me give you guys the link instead. Um, they are right here. 
So if you click this link here, you guys can check it yourself on the page where you can, you can zoom in a lot more than these slides do. Yeah. So. But yeah, um, going on to the next topic of new armors, we have another heritage armor to show you guys. And is this one, this one is um, more confirmed, right? It's not a guard or anything, but it's not a hundred percent complete, right? Right. So, uh, if you're showing both the male and the female, uh, the male armor, uh, so on both sets, the gloves aren't complete. They need some fancy cuff. Uh, the male is missing like a 3D effect on the coat and mm -hmm. the female is missing the cool anchor boots that the male has. So gloves and boots and collars still need some work, but uh, this is basically the prototype of what people will be wearing. So we're getting long flowy coats. Yeah, I remember us talking about it the first time we saw it and we were wondering like, are we ever, are we gonna get a long coat? That's so cool. And it seems like uh, at least the Coltir and uh, Ally Drace will indeed get some. I'm also happy that they're able to preserve the effect of the collar uh, being 3D. Uh, in addition to having shoulder pads, I was wondering how that was going to work out. And, mm -hmm. you no, know, it's not as cool as what the NPCs have, but it's still something. I think it's neat. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they've got the anchor on the back of the coat and they've got the tri-cornered hat. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I think it looks different than the other things. It doesn't feel as formulaic, like, okay, now we have to have, like, a badass robe with doodads on. It's like, no, like, they're pirates with capes. They have capes. Yep. And here I'll show you guys the more elaborate model. Um, where was this uh, more elaborate model taken from? Where he uh, has the hand pieces? Oh, so this was just like one of the high ranking uh, Kulturas NPCs. And okay. we're speculating that like this is probably closer to what the cuffs will end up to. Probably mm -hmm. even more elaborate. Um, mm -hmm. So like this is the silhouette. It won't be this weird... I don't know, like skin tight wrist thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you can see the difference in the handcuffs right there. So I'll go back to the model before. There, you see that these look a little bit more empty, like something is missing. Yeah, you can also see, what I like is how um, you can tell that there's like a ranking system and that you are higher up than the other NPC we showed. And like a lot of NPCs in Culture S, they kind of have the same type of armor, but if they're higher up, it's fancier. So, you know, people mm -hmm. by the docks will have a shirt and pants and like a little waistcoat and that same elaborate belt. And then as you move higher up, they have, you know, the fancier coats with the gold brocade. Mm -hmm. And we can see that the NPC and the heritage armor still has the interesting golden like anchor trim, like curved, like the little curved anchor sort of at the bottom by their mm -hmm. knees. But the back of the NPCs is all plain, but because we're all high up in ranking, we have that gigantic anchor on the back. So I like how it's not just some like super fantastical, it, it, it feels very realistic. Like, you know, we're one of them and we did something yeah. really cool. So we are like a higher ranking member of their neighbor, naval or, you know, ad admiralty. We're mm -hmm. like, you know, we're, we're like right below Jaina, but it's not like some it's not some like fantastical thing where it's like we're wearing a boat on our heads and you know like dancing fish's shoulders. <laughs> it feels it feels like grounded in their culture, which is yeah. cool. Oh, which kind of gives the same vibe as the city itself, like Boraz. Right. If you compare it to like the Zandalari city, for example, it's very, I guess, realistic, grounding, grounded. Yeah, like you said, for sure. And I, I wonder how long after these are introduced into the game, how long it would take for us other races to also get a longer coat model i i right. feel like it could happen um but i guess we'll see i think it'd be cool if the old god um raid had interesting cloaks like you know sweeping things with little tentacles on them and mm. i know you know oh, weird wow yeah they can ropes. be really they can be really creative with these coats once they've got it going yeah so curious to see creepy with tentacles <laughs> Yeah, this isn't in the model viewer yet, so we don't, um, we can't see what it looks like, but I, I hope more coats are coming. People mm -hmm. like coats. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be cool. Um, so yeah, the other armor set we have, this is not complete yet, but we have our first tease of the uh, 
Night Elf themed and Forsaken themed Warfront armor rewards. Mm -hmm. They're Forsaken and Night Elf themed, but they are for all Horde and all Alliance, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay. And they also, just happen to look really good on... I, I love the Forsaken one on the Forsaken. Like, it fits yeah. in really well with, mm -hmm. like, just their, their stance anatomy. and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I noticed somebody mentioned previously when we showed the armor from Siege of Zuldazar, uh, there was actually no plate version. I, yeah. I assume that's not been data mined yet. Exactly. And for this one, what you'll notice is that cloth is missing. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's uh, let's get into him. Let's uh, let's show off the Forsaken versions first. Uh, we can start. Let's see. Let's start with Horde leather. Yeah. So these look very roguelike. Um, like other Warfront's armor, there are like two tiers of it. So the one from doing the weekly quest has fancier armor than the ones that don't. So you notice the purple version we're showing has the spikes on the head. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it kind of looks like very traditional rogue. Uh, looks really, it looks really good on the Forsaken. Uh, it's like, oh, you know, the, the, the pants sort of turn into the bone. Uh, I don't know, it, it just seems to fit really well with the fantasy yeah. of a Forsaken Road. Yeah, mm hmm And yeah, you um, can see when they're switching over, like we have, you have some of the slightly more simpler models, so that's the sort of less, um, the less fancy one, and then you have the one with more spikes and stuff, and that's the fancier one. And I guess that would be the higher item level one. Yeah, so, you know, if you do the, if you win the Warfront, you can get the simple, if you do the, whatever the equivalent is for that 370 mm -hmm. piece in 8.1, then you get the fancier one. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll switch over to the, let's see, let's go to Horde Mail. So, I know we were just making fun of the other male armor, but I think that this male armor, especially the, uh, more elaborate tint, uh, I think it's pretty cool. I think it gets across. It looks really practical. Like it's you know a chainmail tunic, especially in the back, and mm -hmm. it, it it just seems like like this version it's showing right now. I think yeah yeah I, I agree. It's not it's mail that's not some weird like oh we have to have a hunter theme. Let's stick an animal on the shoulders. <laughs> uh, I think I think I think it fits the again the Forsaken very well, and I think the the chainmail tunic coat thing is I don't know it, it looks cool. Yeah, like it looks I, like an actual kind of fashionable <laughs> yeah i think it looks a lot better than the male version that we had from the pve side so if you're not very happy with the pve then at least you've got male pvp which looks better yeah and i like the whole the they it has spikes on it so it doesn't look like oh this is like a weak version of plate but i, I love the the chain ring details i love the shoulders how uh you know you've got like the sylvanas skulls on them and the mm -hmm. green gems um but yeah, I I really like this male set compared to a lot mm -hmm. of other male sets. Mm -hmm. And I, I like the tints, which is a bit more reddish. Yeah, I think the purple this. one's cool. Yeah, yeah, purple. That's it. This one. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's my favorite. Let's move over to uh, plate ones. We didn't see any plate from the PVE, but at least now we can see some from the PVP. And I believe this first one that's showing is the fancier version. Normally you can tell because there's a lot more spikes. Yep. And here's other tints of it. I noticed, I think all the PvP ones had uh, similar tint colors, uh, but in their own models. Yeah, so it's like a green one and then mm -hmm. kind of like a reddish purple and then more of a gray purple uh, one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, think, I really I mean, want to see the cloth versions. Yeah, this this gets a cool Death Guard vibe uh, through. I also think it fits the Forsaken models really well. I love how the pants, you know, the, the bones show through for the lower half of the legs, mm -hmm. but you have these, like, spike bracelet things going around their kneecaps. Oh, yeah, and, it's showing now, so it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the it knees just, aren't it, completely it, naked. Yeah, it just... And uh, the boots are closed-toed, which you usually don't get on a Forsaken. So oh, that's uh, true. Good point. Yeah, I just I think it happens to look really cool, and mm -hmm. the armor like evokes the skeleton, and mm -hmm. then you have the bow, like the rib cage pops through at key moments. So I, I think that I think that these sets are pretty uh, pretty neat for the Forsaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed it's covering the knees and the elbows and the toes. Yeah. Yeah. The fancy version, that is. 
So uh, cool. yeah, they're getting their their joints protected. Yeah, <laughs> it's time to protect everything. Uh, we can move over to the alliance side of things. Uh, we could yeah. start off with let's start off with plate since we ended the yeah. horde with plate. Let's start alliance with plate, right here. And uh, yeah, as we mentioned, um, we do have this sort of knight elfy uh, inspiration or the feeling, and that's why we have the knight elf models here also showing the armor off. Uh, this looks like the more simpler version. Yeah. No feathers. Yeah. And then this is the more fancy version with feathers. And you can see little details like the moons uh, on both arms or shoulders, rather. Yeah. And uh, I really wanted to see this on the Night Elf female, but it wasn't possible at the time with all the weird bugs with the patch. But I would love to... I Hopefully we can do a preview on that soon. Um, yeah, I love... I like the feathers. I feel like we're, we're still missing a color. Uh, maybe there'll be a, you know, night warrior tint, which would be awesome. Oh, yeah. For the new customization options. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I like the feathers and uh, the moons are a nice touch as well um, with how, you know, mm -hmm. that's such an important part of mm -hmm. the elf culture. So. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the uh, the simple one, but the, the fancy one. Uh, that's kind of the case with all of them, to be honest. They, yeah. they all look pretty bad uh in their original version and then the fancy one looks a lot better yeah the fancy one is like oh like here's actual defining elements of the culture like feathers and yeah moves. uh let's move over to the male version so for alliance we've got this one and uh, i would say this is the uh, simpler version because there's no nothing fancy i don't remember if this one had feathers it does there we go it does yep, yeah there are feathers yeah definitely feathers i feel like this is still coming along but i like how the shoulders are very dainty with those little like swoop swirl things mm -hmm. at the top i don't know how practical they are but i think <laughs> that the shoulders are pretty and if you look at them from the side view it looks the gloves and shoulders have stylized leaves on them, emphasizing that connection to nature. Mm, mm -hmm. So I think that that's a nice tribute. It's not just like, oh, let's have purple armor and call it night elves. It's mm -hmm. reflecting their heritage. Yeah, I don't think this, this male version looks too bad, actually. And uh, I also noticed how the, uh, the gold with blue is a very screaming alliance color. Yep. Which, uh, which also looks pretty cool. Uh, I think it might come up after this version. Let's see. Uh, together with the feathers, I think that's probably my favorite. Yeah, there it is. Like, this looks very alliance-y. Yeah. So you could go around with the, uh, the alliance shield, alliance sword, and show off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, I the leather that... one... Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that the leather one kind of gives me vibes a little bit of the leather original PvP sets. Uh, I don't know, just something about the tunic being purple and the way... Mm. I don't know, just like the, mm -hmm. the, the blue gems on the purple kind of full coverage shirt with like the panels and the, kind of the quilting. I don't know, it kind of gives me that, that vibe of like classic rogue set. Mm -hmm. Similar to how the Forsaken plate gives me the vibe of like high warlords plate set so uh um yeah i'd be curious to see this on a female if it looked similar or not but i still i like how there is this druid vibe to it how you don't have feathers but you have claws and fur on the elaborate variant uh which makes sense for you know druids and malfurion uh-huh i noticed uh, this one doesn't have feathers sticking out like the male yeah. and the plate version yeah, it has like these weird claws, which I assume is, you know, like, oh, I'm a, I'm a bear druid, rawr. Yeah, like, yeah. So it gives a more druidy feeling, for sure. Yeah. I'd be really curious to see the cloth, because if, you know, there's Taranda, and she's a priest, but now she's like an everything, mm -hmm. uh, you know, warrior, huntress, uh, I'd be curious if the cloth set reflects, like, Taranda's kind of magic specialty, mm -hmm. if the leather one reflects Malfurion and his druids. This was uh, leather, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have cloth for that yet. Yeah. I'm really hoping for some uh, more tunics for for leather. Sorry, for cloth users as well. Like not necessarily from uh, Warfront specifically, but just in general. 
I I always prefer using tunics for transmog, but everything is always like a robe. So it would be cool yeah. to get some kind of tunic and then getting them in four different colors would be perfect too. Because there's a lot of transmogs out there which look great, like leg pieces, but you can't show them off because the, the robe is covering it. Like a lot right. of old tier sets too, like Warlock tier one and tier three and many of them have really cool looking legs, but they're not visible if you don't wear one of the sort of three standard looking yep. tunics that exist in the game <laughs> because everything right. else just looks ridiculous yeah so yeah uh moving on we have a lot more models but that covered that covers it for armor uh there's a lots of weapons that we found that match these uh forsaken and night elf warfront armor in addition to siege of zuldazar i'm uh, mm -hmm. not all sure what you have in the slideshow but People, I think, are most excited about the glaives for the Night Elves and Forsaken, especially Night Elves, because that's such an iconic weapon for them. And there's been a ton of discussion surrounding the class requirements for glaives, because glaives have been around forever, and like many NPCs use them, but uh, only uh, demon hunters can use the glaives, and the characters using glaives, like, you know, wardens or the sentinels, are not demon hunters. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of speculation if maybe... Like, this could be a weapon type available for, like, more classes yeah. or maybe... Yeah, because people are really upset them. about that. They want to use them, right. but only demon hunters can use them normally. Yeah, and that doesn't really fit with the lore that you get something that looks like a sentinel weapon, but you have to be a demon hunter to mm -hmm. resemble a sentinel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I've got everything in slides. I've got the focus here on the glaives and we got a slideshow which shows off all of the weapons one after another. And uh, honestly, it's almost like I don't even know where to start. There's so much. Uh, there's pole arms, there's wands, there's swords, there's shields. Like you see a shield right now. Uh, from the color, you can probably guess that it's a lion's yep. shield. Um, well, from the, from the model too. Um, and uh, all of the weapons, I believe, also come in the three or four different tints. Yeah, three tints. Uh, so the Warfront is three tints, and then the Raid is four tints. Yeah. I think um. we have here are some examples of the ones from the Raids as well. There was a section called Naga. Yeah, it just was like Naga weapons, so I don't know if this is maybe related to the Crucible of Storms raid, which, you know, is more yeah. about like, corrupt Naga. But, you know, it looks it looks kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, definitely the highlight is the um, Night Elf and Forsaken uh, weapons. Ooh, I showed you guys the Night Elf uh, glaive. Let me show you guys the Horde mm -hmm. version as well. There. So these, uh, so this glaive together with the alliance one are the ones in main discussion about whether other classes will be able to use them as well. Yeah. Yeah, the offhand you saw previously is an example of an offhand from Siege of Soldizar. Yeah. But yeah, there's tons. Uh, I think this is a, is it a staff or a wand? I'm not sure. Uh, which, also from uh, the raid. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, the, no, there's both staves and staves and wands from the raid. You're probably mm -hmm. looking at the staff, it's more elaborate and kind of like weird bones on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So probably a staff. Looks yeah. like a kind of short staff, yeah. unless it's just very, very big. <laughs> yeah. Also, a lot of these weapons from the raid, the the armor is more bon Bonsomdi, but some of the weapons are more like vibrant Zandalari, like the two-handed sword with the weird like neon carvings on it, or the shield. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neon. Uh, so... You know, you do have some death bone weapons, but then you also have some brighter ones. You see some shields here as well. I, I just sped up the slideshow so that we can get through more of these pictures. Yeah. <laughs> it actually looks really cool when it's switching color like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hmm. Yeah. Let's see what's next after the shields. Oh, these are uh, these also glaives. Yeah, I think these are glaives from, yeah. from the raid itself. Yeah. With a different tints. It looks really creepy. It looks like a spider. Yeah. Like a weird bone spider. Yeah. <laughs> from from an angle. And these are fist weapons. Coming in different yeah. colors. Also more Bonsomdi there. Yep. Let's see what's next after this one. Uh, we've got some kind of... Wait, did that just reset? I think it just reset. 
and this was really yeah. fast. But it was another type of weapon showing. Uh, yeah. If you guys are interested in looking at the models yourself, I can link you guys the uh, here. A mace? Yeah, it was probably a mace. I think you're right. Uh, if you check out that link there, you can see all the different models under which raid and what weapon type they are and what faction they are. So you can see all of them. Yeah. There's tons. Like, I, I think I've barely shown like half of them now. Barely. Yeah. Mm hmm. And they all come in different tints, as you can see. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, now we're back to where we were talking about the mace. Actually, I think this might be the mace, unless they're both maces. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah, moving on from weapons, we have another very interesting one. I was uh, surprised to see it now because I kind of forgot about the fact that we don't know how the remaining of the druid forms look yeah, like. Yeah, and now we do. Yeah, and now we do. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but we covered a lot of druid farms, but there were some that were missing. And in particular, the biggest question marks were the boomkin models, because that's yep. very, you know, it's a, it's one of those very specific sort of iconic figures. So people were very curious to see how they look like. And now we've got some answers. Let me show them off. Um, there. Let's start off with the Kultiras model of the boomkin yeah there. so it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like yeah, question it's mark like a dancing ogre kind of i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i see a comment in the chat just like um yeah that's exactly how i felt as well i'm like yeah. um i mean it reminds of the boomkin it has a similar body form and everything yeah, but that's... what is going on <laughs> Yeah, I know. We no one expected it to be quite like that. <laughs> it looks hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's so hilarious. it's almost cute though. I feel like it's uh, it's so funny that it's almost cute, but it's yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's kind of weird. But yeah. it's got a lot of details, and it does have this sort of Kultiran vibe with uh, like if you compare it to the um, the bear, you see similarities. You know, all those sort of tree branches and everything. Yeah. I was actually expecting them to be skinny for some reason. Oh. Huh. I don't know why. I, I was expecting... Oh, I guess, I guess the wicker thing, like, oh, maybe it's just, like, yeah, may... tall, yeah. creepy thing with weird extended limbs. Yeah. I guess... Well, I mean, this is more traditionally the silhouette of a boomkin. It is. It is. So it makes sense. Yeah. But that's just something that was going on in my head. For some reason, that's what I was expecting to see. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool to finally see the form, though. I've been waiting for a long time. For so long that I forgot that I was waiting for it. So it was a nice surprise to see it. Yeah. Um, we also got an update on the Zandalar aquatic form. Yeah. So it's, is... a, mm -hmm. it's like a little shark, but blingy shark. It has like a big... I like it. Necklace. Yeah, I think it's cute. It looks nice, especially this blue version. Yeah. So uh, this was less controversial. Yeah. Oh wait, interesting. So, Perk, what was the uh, reaction from the the Boomkin form? Oh well, everyone was just was like, oh, like what's what's this? <laughs> like we didn't expect this. Like I'm so confused by this. Um, oh, you know, I course. thought it would be something else. Um, because so, I saw yeah, Wowhead post tons of news, right? And I I yeah. had read through and skimmed through most of them, especially when in bed, like scrolling through Twitter. But yeah. I I actually missed this one, so I didn't know this until yeah, this like an hour ago. This was the first thing we started with. Uh, Stevon gave me a list of 30 models, and mm -hmm. we were like, uh, there was like, what, what do I do first? I'm like, oh, go with Culture on Boomkin, because that's really anticipated, <laughs> and it looks really funny. So, yeah. We yeah, no, I first. didn't know about it, so I just saw it, and I was like, uh, yeah. what? <laughs> what yeah. is this? <laughs> but yeah, it looks funny. I'm yeah. not sure if people will specifically change to Culture and for the Boomkin form, but uh, you know, if you want to look different, there's definitely people yeah. who would be interested in that. I think it does look pretty cool, but it also yeah. looks very weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and speaking of Boomkins, we also have another Boomkin model. Um, a bit less shocking. We have the High Mountain oh. Tauren Boomkin form. Yeah, so this was, this was seen very positively because people were really excited that, you know, they got a 
finally the you know the alley brace already out was getting an update to actually include the uh you know visible antlers that all the other forms have so mm -hmm. now the boom can have antlers and even though it looks traditional model it has that little extra to set it apart from the regular Torin uh boom kin. yeah definitely the the details are nice like you mentioned the antlers and also the texture of the um uh, I don't know if I should call it skin or fur, uh, but the yeah. texture of uh, the body itself also looks really cool. So I think uh, this has like a perfect match. Yep. So, uh, yeah, people like the High Mountain Torn, very excited, pleasantly surprised by Zandalari Tro. And Coaster Run Human, it's more like a, well, I guess that's it's here it is. <laughs> you it's know? like, um, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, what is this? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I think it looks cool. The feathers, of course. But they, yeah. they look almost like um, like bark, like a tree almost, yeah. if you look at them. Yeah. They look rougher than the regular broomkin. Yeah. And the details of um, those uh, thingies that are stuck at, like across his chest kind of thing. Yeah. They look pretty it's cool a... too. What, yeah. what are they? Are they feathers too? I thought they were leaves. Mm. Like, it was like a mm -hmm. weird overgrown tree. Uh, mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Be. Like, so it's, so I know when, I think everyone assumed it was a different model because we've seen very different tree models uh, in Kulturas, but we got this like, very <laughs> different looking thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's uh, interesting. You can go to the Wowhead page and see all the different animations, like it does dances and stuff. Ah, okay, cool. So we can actually, you can see it doing the moonkin dance. It, it looks like an ogre dressed up. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's uh, a good point. They look like dream catchers. Yeah. The way that they're I, hanging there. Yeah. So I don't know how practical that is, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think, I don't know if there's any, any more allied race druid forms to data mine. Yeah, uh, I was thinking about we... that too. I was going to ask you like, okay, so what else are we missing? Cause I've kind of forgotten which ones I've missed. Let me check. So the, I know that there could be, we don't know what classes culture on allied race can be, but if they can be shaman, then we still have the cool totems, totems. to data mine. Yeah. Uh, I guess, um, let's see, we've got moonkin, we've got flight form, we've got aquatic form, travel form, cat form, bear form. Um, and I guess that's about it. I don't think we're missing any. We've got three travel forms, and then yeah, oh, tree of tree of life maybe. Oh yeah. Did, wait, so, did any like, of them get a tree of life? Uh, well, I know like the four original races, like the tree of life is a different tint, and yeah. then the incarnation moonkin has like a special armored version. So we we don't know that yet. Okay. So a few more things to wait for. Yeah, that's cool. Make druids happy. More things to look forward to. Yeah. Speaking of allied races, we also have a Kulteran update. Is this one uh, confirmed? The Kulteran possible allied race mount? Uh, not 100%, but based on the file name, it it like very descriptive hinting that it is the mount. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, yes, it's a horse. We've had all that discussion that... Uh, oh, why did the Alliance keep getting horses? Cooler things are on the way. But I'm not really sure what people were expecting for culture us maybe yeah both. that's what i was thinking <laughs> yeah. as well like i mean yeah sure oh my god it's another horse but what else would the culturan race have as a mount right because it's all based on the human race and the humans have the horses and yeah. this, is, this is a very pretty horse it's kind of like anduin's horse with the fancy tail yeah um yeah it's a very pretty horse indeed it's a fancy one yeah it's got these little um. thingies on the tail as well yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it looks pretty. Um, I mean, if it was a boat, I, I, I wouldn't say no to a boat, like an actual boat that doesn't yeah. sink. <laughs> oh, my God. That's actually a good point. It could have been a boat similar to the yeah. one that we got. Could have yeah. been a boat that has water walking. Yep. So That's that would have been cool. Yeah. That is true. Or like maybe this will be a horse for Jaina to ride. Oh, it's not her colors, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, all signs point that this is likely the mount. Of course, anything is subject to change. It could, mm -hmm. you know, change tomorrow. But yep. right now, it's looking like that's the mount. Could be changed already. We just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, we also have some new mount models for the uh, the night sabers. Wait, are, are they yeah. updated models or are they just separate mounts? These are separate ones, so we think maybe they'll be seen in the warfront, or some will be drops from you know the warfront. Uh, response. Mm -hmm. uh, these are these are not a replacement for your existing night saber mounts. Okay. Yeah, because I noticed these have uh, armor, or not exactly armor, but they've got these uh, yeah. details on them. They're wearing something. Yeah. yeah. I can't tell what it is, but it's something. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they look really cool. I really like this sort of new high definition night saber models. Yeah. Like those fangs and the details around the face. I think they, I think they look awesome. Yeah. We also have a... Oh, this is an interesting one. So we have an updated model for the hive mind mount. Right. And it looks very cool. And in addition, the hive mind mount has a new icon. And the icon matches the model. And the whole oh, big deal mm -hmm. with Secret Finding at launch was that... Uh, you know, only uh, they wouldn't. It wouldn't have an old model if it was a secret. And it's like, well, now this has a new model, so and an icon to match. And the icon is specifically called Hive Mind. So I think this is the final model. Mm. I think they were getting a lot of questions about the mount being a part of that secret thing. So then they had to announce that no, it's it's not the case. But I feel like we are getting closer to it being a real thing. I don't think it's going to be very far into the future. I think it's going to be closer than we think. Right. And I also feel that we're not going to get that super bizarre, like, oh, when 20 hive minds are together, you go faster type deal. But it will finding the actual mount will be a secret. I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I, I mean, it might be a thing where people get together and you get faster. Maybe like the the standard speed of it is very slow. Yeah. And then it becomes all the way up to normal speed if more people are together. Yeah. I don't know if they kept that part in, but that yeah, that's how it worked. It, it was meant to work that way when it was data mined in like, you know, Oh, is that text five. gone? Yeah. So I, oh, I don't see. Okay. So let me, let me just check this quickly. So... Do, do, do. I'm comparing the PTR and live version of the page mm -hmm. to see if they have different stuff on it. Um, so if I go to the spell on the PTR and I go, face is white. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, so the hive mind, uh, the the icon uh, on live wow is called spell shadow brainwash, and now the icon on PTR is called inventory hive mind. So they've changed it just for that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So. Uh, and then if we, let's see if there's any spells with this. Uh, I feel like they've also, hmm, let's see, spells 41, join hive mind. I'm seeing if the spell talking about joining has, uh, so that they didn't update the spells talking about the hive mind to use the new icon. So okay. to me that shows maybe like they're they're not updating that part of it. It still has like all the old looks with it. Mm -hmm. um, but it was meant to work. Um, there was a spell called joins with the target, a member of your hive mind, limited to the outdoors following normal vehicle rules. Apply aura mod mounted speed percentage. Apply aura increase mounted speed percentage stacks. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that you have this like mega hive mind going around, scooting around super fast if everyone had it. Yeah. But. I don't think that I don't think that's coming through for eight point one. I just think that there'll be a, a fun way to get the, you know, just the basic mount. Yeah. Or maybe it will come through. But they did say at one point that I thought they said something on Twitter how like, it was cool, but it wasn't ready or set up or something to that effect. Yeah, I, I don't remember. I'm trying to remember th what the uh, reasoning or what the tweet said exactly. But it, yeah, it said I'm something. Yeah, so. I'm seeing. I'm seeing. If I can find it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. I'm trying to remember. Huh. I mean, it was definitely it was a definitely a word of saying it's not in the game right now. Um, but yeah. I don't remember how they worded it. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm looking at Muffinus's Twitter and maybe this. I'm seeing if maybe it's in a reply. Uh, maybe if you search his it. name space yeah. half mind. Yeah. Hmm. 
hive mm. mind. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, the hive mind mount was actually a placeholder during beta. It's since been removed from data. The secret hunt, however, is far from over. Okay, uh, so he doesn't say much. Uh, right. Um, it's been removed. Yeah. So, I don't know, but they, they gave it a new icon and model. Yeah, so that's now... not a placeholder anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I guess the old icon and old model were placeholders for this. So now we'll get to see it. I don't know. Yep. I guess we'll see. Yeah, the secret was far from over. Yeah, he did say that, indeed. Um, yeah, it didn't, it, it didn't really give us a real clue about the hive mind, but I guess we'll see. Yep. We also got some uh, new PvP mounts. I know there's been uh, a lot of question I love marks. The white, yeah, the white cat is amazing. Um, these will be from Here. Vicious Saddles. Uh, Blizzard also this tweeted one. they... Yeah, so cool. I love yep. that one. Now I, I have to too. PvP. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, um, it looks like there's two models. Uh, and, uh, well, one for Alliance and one for Horde. And it seems like they have two tints. Yeah. So and what are the these, two tints about? So these are like black and white recolors of a um, the Forsaken Warhorse and the uh, Saber Cat that have been from Vicious Saddles for a really long time. And these models aren't necessarily new, but they finally added mounts to them. So they've been just hanging out in the data for, you know, years at this point. Okay. Uh, so we think all of them are from Vicious Saddles. Nothing is confirmed. Uh, you may also be thinking, hey, but there's no Vicious Saddle vendor. This is a bug, and it'll be making a return in the patch, so you can once again target the uh, mounts you want from Vicious Saddles, as opposed to just being given, like, one per season. Mm -hmm. um, but, I actually yeah, have an I extra Vicious Saddle. One. Oh, you should save it on the, on, the, on the white one. It looks so cool. I love I the white lightsaber. It really does. It's on the screen now again for you guys to see it. I was uh, excited for the new expansion and then I was excited for the PvP season to finally start. So I was like, I'm going to go and buy my mount. And then I couldn't. I couldn't find any updated mounts from the vendor. And I was uh, very confused. I, I was like, what is yeah. going on? Why is there no mount on the vendor? And then I saw the mount as a reward if you complete yeah. the PvP in the season. And like if you reach 100%. And um, apparently, like you said, there was some new information on that they will probably be in the vendors sometime. Is it yeah. 8.1 or? Yeah, there was a blue post being like, yeah, we messed up. Um, they should be on the vendors because everyone's like, well, what am I going to do with this like beautiful data mine mount if I don't have a choice with what I get? Yeah. Also, that means because there's currently no achievements that give Vicious Saddles, it means that all the old PvP mounts are unobtainable, right? Right. So that's why when the saddle will come back on the vendor, then you can get all the old um, yeah. as well. Because right now people are just like, well, I don't want this hippo. I don't want this Magar orc. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I want to get you know this one I really care about, and you can't do it right now. I don't know why they couldn't have hotfixed like, the vendors in, but I guess it has to wait for a patch. Yeah, I guess so. Somebody in the chat says you can still get the saddles. Tell me how, because well, I don't think the achievement gives it anymore, does it? I think, yeah, I think you just get them out when you fill up the bar. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. Yeah, and then you can get them, of course, in the future. Oh, that's uh, true. You can still get them from the uh, from completing RBGs. Right. That's true. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that covers the new mount models for yeah. the new mounts coming in in 8.1. Uh, the next topic in new models are creatures. Yeah. So we noticed that there were a lot of night elf tree creatures, actually. Yeah, probably for the war fronts. Oh, yes, of course. I was yeah. wondering at first, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, there's Ancient Protectors, Ancient of War, Ancient of Wind, mm -hmm. uh, Ancient of War Diseased, uh, and Tree of Life. Lots of awesome Night Elf tree protectors. Mm -hmm. um, there's also versions of Nightsabers that are not the mounts. Uh, there are... I'm going to mispronounce this. There, let's see. There <laughs> is the Capybara, which is... 
kind of like a mascot of Brazil. It's a very cool, cute little furry creature. Um, yeah, it's kind I of was... like a big guinea mm-hmm. pig. So, uh, yeah. Is it a reference specifically, or or like what is this? Is it going to be a pet? We don't know. We don't um, know. But we have some people from Brazil, and they were really excited. Yeah, to see I can this imagine. Model. Yeah. So it's kind of like this little cute furry, mm-hmm. you know, guinea pig, big guinea pig. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, um, always good that there is cute models added in patches. Mm-hmm. We also have a stag here, which uh, kind of goes hand in hand with the sleigh here. Yeah, so this is probably a Wintervale thing. Yeah, probably Christmas things. Yeah. During Wintervale. We also got some updated Tall Striders. Let's see if I can find them. Uh, bum, bum, bum. I actually cannot find them, but I uh, we can give you guys yep, a they're updated. quick flashback of Kelthus again with the uh, golden orbs. Let me find the Tall Striders. I think they just snuck away. Uh, let's see. Creatures, Tall Striders. There we go. There's actually a yeah. lot of colors as well of these tall striders. Yeah, Lots of so, different versions of it. Yeah, that could be fun for hunters. Mm-hmm. Um, it's to like match the with their transmog. Yeah, and also um, it's one of those models where there are the matching uh, mounts like from Love is in the Air and the Dark Moon Fair. And then there's the matching battle pets. So it's like a fun little family of tall striders that yeah. you can have. Yeah, you, you can really see, especially with uh, this color here, how how much it's improved from the old model yep a reskin yeah these are just basically updated models for the creatures in the game it's just little things like we've seen this a lot with bfa as well in general creatures get updated models for the game to be you know fresher i guess you could say yeah more modern more up to date like, we saw some of those. Was it the prairie dog, which looked like it had, like, three pixels? Yeah, yeah it was really bad. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of them are updated just to make, you know, the game feel newer and better. Yeah. But yeah, I think this covers all the models uh, that we took note of to show off to you guys. And we can dive into some lore instead. Yeah. Uh, the first topic, oh yeah, the uh, the priest artifact weapon from Legion, yeah. Zal Atath, if that is how you pronounce it. Uh, apparently, we're we've been seeing a. Uh, so I saw this article is actually very well put together. I must say, I, I don't know if uh, I don't know who did it. Was it you, Perk, or somebody else? Um, I help, but a- Angelin did it, and he's like a huge shadow priest. Uh, ah, so he was okay. really excited. Uh, about I can imagine. So yeah. what happened was there was a quest item found with the name of Zalatov, and a lot of people wondering, what does this mean? Is it going to come back in one way or another? Uh, there were a lot of, not a lot, but there were a few of these artifact uh, weapons which had a certain history to them that made them feel a bit more, I guess you could say, attaching. For example, a lot of people know about the hunter artifact weapon with Hati, which kind of disappeared with the weapon as well right. and uh, this was even asked in one of those old Q&As yeah. and Ian's I think it was Ian who answered that we will see some kind of um, closure or of some sort in the future uh, but we don't know exactly when and uh, there's been a lot of things now coming around with Zalatath it started with this quest item and I think after that you guys data mined through a bunch of different spells and i don't know item descriptions and whatnot and you guys have actually come together with a possible um scenario of what is going to happen right just based on names of things that they've data mined which is really cool (laughs) when i was reading this i was mind blown i was like oh my god (laughs) So there's a new version that's called Zalatath has a mind of its own. One surprised weapon of priests used against the Burning Legion. This artifact has lost its power and is, a, is in a dormant state for now. For now. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like, hmm, what's going on? And it seems that we enter the dagger and we retrieve Zalatath in some form. 
And then we, because there, there's a zone called Dagger Realm and spells called like Into the Dagger and Return. And then we will take Zalatath and empower Zalatath by feeding Naga souls to her. And there are spells called like Zalatath Fed, Zalatath Consume, Consume mm-hmm. the Void. You have gained the allegiance of the Void. And we feed Zalatath and then uh, Zalatath is strong enough to then leave the dagger and there are spells called Zal leaves dagger and dagger empty. And mm-hmm. there's also a zone and the name is called delete, but the directory is called Nizoth. Mm-hmm. So Zalatath is, it seems like we're, we're, you know, feeding Zalatath, making her nice and, and strong. And then she's strong enough to escape the dagger and go off and do maybe horrible things. And, Maybe she made us feel bad for her, and then she went off and <laughs> did something terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we don't know if this is like a mini game or a one-time thing or something related to the Crucible of Storms raid. Because Ian said there would be quests explaining the raid and the story for both sides that you know were an alliance. So mm-hmm. I think that's related. Um, so yeah, really exciting stuff, and we're curious if that means that like Thal- Thalthiel could appear, or you know, mm-hmm. Alunan, or you know, Hati at important points in the future. Yep. yep. Yeah, I think it's really cool to bring back uh, these uh, sort of important parts of previous expansions. Well, the most recent expansion, Legion, uh, because I think a lot of uh, people kind of you know grew into a liking of their artifact weapon if it had a very strong story especially so uh, mm-hmm. i think this is really nice to see and then there were also a lot of um questions whether this will be a priest only thing or if it will become right. a quest for everybody uh so i guess we'll see yeah so um yeah the next thing we found is um a lot of plot speculation uh related we to should a bunch maybe put Spoilers oh, yeah. up. Yeah, let's do it for this one, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just realized, so let's do that. I feel like Zalatath is like, okay, yeah, we knew. I mean, it's like we we knew they wanted to have more stuff with weapons. Look, Zalatath is evil. Surprise. But this part, I think we should have spoilers up for. Mm-hmm. It's up. Uh, cool. So um, <laughs> we, we found a bunch. We uh, sort of inspired by Zalatath. We went through a lot of spells you know, items and NPCs, and, um, yeah, we, uh, we don't, this isn't, don't take this as fact, but there's some hints as to where the story could go for some characters. Mm-hmm. So, for Sour Fang, the most important thing is that there's a new item called Worn Cloak. Uh, the use is don a worn cloak and hood, potentially throwing assassins off of Sour Fang's trail, and the flavor text is, some revolutions begin with the smallest acts of defiance so Mm -hmm. the last time we saw sour thing he was in the storm in prison so it's like does he escape are we like defending him on the horde side uh so people cannot find him um so that that's interesting and blizzard said he's going to be a major part of the 8.1 story uh, oh, did they say that it, specific? Oh, yeah, of course they did. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. with the yeah, yeah, being in Toronto. And Toronto. And yeah. The other interesting thing is that they keep saying, "Oh, you know, this isn't like Siege of Ogremore 2.0," but this really sounds like it when it's like, "Oh, you know, like Sour Fang is in exile, and there is, you know, he's part of a revolution." This, you know, sort of sounds like Vol'jin um, yeah. building something up to fight Garrosh. So I'm curious how it won't be different. How 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 it will be different? Well, I guess in a way, uh, he's not just going, he's not purely going against his people, right? He, he's just going against Sylvanas and he's actually uh, not going against the Alliance at all. So in that sense, right. it wouldn't even make sense for Alliance to attack him if the Horde would be like, yeah, actually, Sylvanas like, yeah, we're not happy with Sarfang because he doesn't think we're honorable. So, hey, can you kill him? You know, like it doesn't. Yeah. So it can't be the same but there's definitely like you said slight parallels that can be drawn because right. there's a lot of reminders there of things going on the next character with an interesting spell is that there is one called signal Nathanos with the description send up Ooh. a flare to signal Nathanos that you found delarin yeah so it's like oh why, why do they want her body why do like, you want a dead body Nathanos Right, and they've been already reviving fallen alliance heroes in the war campaign, so this makes us 
worry that, you know, do they want to resurrect her? And they've been really pushing the whole, like, Delarin as a live Sylvanas and, like, Sylvanas yeah. kind of becoming Arthas. So it's like, is she, is you know, is she trying to raise this, like, idealistic night elf as, like, a, like, you know, un- unde- mind- mindless undead and sort of parallel what Arthas did to her? Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe this is, maybe this is more, I don't know, this could be like a decoy. Maybe Tehran's like, oh, like, let's set a trap for Nathanos because we talked about how she confronts him at some point. But it's, it, it's disturbing, especially compared to some of the other NPCs that are more closely tied to, yes, the Forsaken are probably doing something with them. Mm-hmm. Because uh, so... it, it was interesting how Delarin had a, I mean, she's a newly introduced character and she had right. a very, very, like, vital role in that sudden um introduction to bfa pretty much so if um it's it's it would have almost been surprising if we didn't see more of her but if we're gonna see more of her in like a forsaken way uh, that that's scary i i was actually surprised she died i was like the way that she has um been introduced to the story she's going to play a big part you know like you mentioned right. before as well, like we know we need more alliance heroes, especially mm-hmm. if something happens to the older ones. So I thought she was going to play a much bigger role, but then she she didn't make it. And um, yeah, she was the subject of a book as well. And usually, usually if you're the subject of a book, you're also tied to something in game. It's usually they don't really just have a character that only exists in a book. So mm-hmm. it makes sense that maybe now we'll see more of her in game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm scared. If she if she is revived, it's going to be so sad. It just keeps reminding me of that scene when Savannah's made her look at the tree. I know. Like turning her face. Oh my god. Yeah. But yeah, I, I guess we'll see where that's going to turn. Yeah, I mean, it's just really just upsetting thinking about the whole thing. Like, even in the book, when you have Delarn from a point of view, like she feels that Elune has abandoned her as she's dying. And yeah. it's just like... I don't know, it's just like a really awful, sad story from start to finish, and it seems like it could get even worse Mm -hmm. uh, in this patch for her. Yep, yep. Uh, So this next one is on Sierra Moon Warden, and she has a new model and title. She is now the Dark Warden instead of just the Wardens, and she has tarnished armor and glowing red eyes, and stuff does not look very good for her either. Uh, her associated voice files have also gone from Night Elf to Void Elf. Uh, and it seems that there's some sort of encounter where Me- Maev is confronting her, and there's a spell where it's like Sira blows a handful of enchanted powder into the eyes of Maev, blinding her for the encounter. Mm. So we don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, has she has she been turned by Sylvanas, or is she, like... I don't know, infused by the night, and now she's, like, shadowy, but still, you know, not corrupt. But yeah. the model looks really dark. Yeah, it really does. N- now that we're talking about it, I realize that a lot of these points are pretty dark, actually. Like, a lot of yeah. the question marks. Of- and then, then we have uh, Tyrande, who's ascended into a night warrior. It's like, everything is turning dark. What is happening? Yeah. Yeah, and this next one, Derek Proud. Oh, yeah. The Horde retrieved his body, and uh, now there are two new NPCs in 8.1. When you click on View 3D, one has him in the human, you know, a dead human, with the armor, but then there's one that resembles Forsaken, and there's an 8.1 spell called Derek Proudmore Revived. So it's like, yep. well... He looks pretty forsaken now. Yep. I mean, it's even a model, so it's pretty much confirmed. Yeah, and his voice lines are using the forsaken sound files, not the human sound files as before. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really dark. It seems like she's trying to turn various fallen heroes. Oh, my God. And... Yeah, I mean, that it makes sense why Tyrande is now trying to intervene before Nathanos raises more fallen as Forsaken. Mm, yeah, and, maybe these things happened before the Ascending. Yeah, and it also, um, we can discuss this a little bit more, but it also ties into the uh, final lore thing we wanted to discuss, which is why Vol'jin, Talanji, Talanji, and Bane, and everyone else is trying to figure out, like, why the heck did you 
appoint Sylvanas as war chief. None of us like her. So it seems the rest of the horde is trying to figure out what's going on because mm-hmm. they did nobody wants her as war chief, and they're even saying things like, you know, she's done much to strain the honor that binds the horde together. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so, yeah. I was reading through that. That nobody, was actually really interesting. Is, no one is really excited to have Sylvanas as war chief and is yeah. agreeing with her. Like Vol'jin was uh, trying to ask Monsamdi, the Lich King, and Ayir, is that how you yeah. pronounce it? And yep. they were all pretty much against Sylvanas themselves. Like no one seems to know why Sylvanas was appointed. Yeah, so this is, um, the implication is that somebody, Vol'jin was not himself when he was saying to to appoint Sylvanas. And he said that when he passed away, it was strange because he he expected to like call upon the Loa, but everything was like covered in smoke and it was very deceptive and it was it was a very strange situation. Mm-hmm. Um so they, they talked to Bonsamdi and he's like, I don't like Sylvanas. She kind of like, you know, disrupts balance. She tips the scales too far. Balance is important. Uh, cause you know, she wants all the dead for herself and she wants to like have more, you know, she wants mm-hmm. to raise people into undeath. Yeah. And then Vol'jin goes to the Lich King and the Lich King is also like the Banshee Queen's schemes threaten the balance. I had no hand in them. And he also reveals that Vol'jin has been altered more than, you know. Yeah. Um, and then he's like, I'm not answering questions. Go away. Like, bye. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, well, so th- it's interesting, like, Bonsambi and the Lich King are very different, you know, they have very different tone, and they, they both don't like Sylvanas. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, she's trying to disrupt the natural order of life and death, which makes me then worry, oh, look, you know, maybe she wants to raise, m- maybe she doesn't care about the Horde succeeding, maybe she wants to kill everyone and just have Forsaken. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with Ayer, Ayer is trying to... Vosin's like, okay, well, so who not only told me Sylvanas was great, but who who also brought me back from death? And Ayer yeah. is like, you have been touched by the hand of valor. Such a noble force does not scheme for mortal thrones. Uh, so Vosin is like, whoa, so like two different people like whispered about Sylvanas and then some other force sent me back to life? Like, I am so confused. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Ayer doesn't really like Vol'jin because Ayer's like, oh, like, Bonsamdi and Ayer are, like, polar opposites. So it seems none of these people like each other, well, deities, but they all agree that they do not like Sylvanas, and they don't know why Vol'jin is back and stronger and who recommended Sylvanas. Yeah. So Vol'jin ends by just saying, like, I need to keep searching for answers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also tells Talanji that, you know, your father was kind of stuck in the old ways, but, you know, you're very forward uh, thinking. You are young, but righteous. You know, call, he says, you know, call upon me if you ever need advice from an old chieftain. So it seems that even if maybe Rastakhan is sort of, you know, stuck to Lanji with Bonsamdi, at least Vol'jin is trying to balance things out and be like a, you know, positive source of, of energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, an advisor that's not just like, oh, I like death. I like everyone dying more for me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it seems like, I don't know, it feels that uh, if she's a disruptor of balance and the enemy of the life and death balance, it feels like, like the are the old gods behind encouraging her to take charge? Like, do they want her to be in charge and creating chaos? Because, um, you know, it seems that if none of these forces like what Sylvanas is doing and in a good war... She's like, oh, I know forces beyond the Alliance and her will be unhappy with me. It's like, oh, yeah, she's, you know, annoying all of these deities of death and yeah. life. Yeah. You know, Alune And annoying like both factions doing... to yeah, some extent. Yeah. Alliance, Horde, Alune, yeah. which is all about life, you know, the yep. Night Elf culture. And now, like, if, if the Lich King doesn't like you, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really messed up, so. <laughs> and something yeah. is really wrong. But at the same time, we don't want it to be that she's under the influence of the old gods either, because that kind of yeah, that feels ruins kind of her personality. Age. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, we want to, I think we want to see, I don't know, what do we want to see? We want to understand. Is there... I think that it would be okay if 
it would be interesting if she realized that the old gods were manipulating stuff and then was like, okay, well, now I'm going to do something that's still questionable, but different. Mm -hmm. Like, if she, if she's still like, oh, I still want to take over the world, but now that I know the old gods are behind this, I'm going to change my tactics. Mm -hmm. um, that that could be interesting. Like, so I don't, the old I don't gods want... are another enemy. Everyone is an right. enemy. Right. I don't want her to do a tactic where it's like, oh, the old gods made me evil. I will now heroically sacrifice myself. Like yeah, exactly. Happened. That would that would be boring if it was just a simple thing like that. Um, I think your microphone just died. Test. Uh, try again. Test, test. It's still a bit low. I can turn you up and then once you come back to regular, I'll just turn you down again. Pepe, what did you do? There we go. Um, is it okay? So it's good now? I think so, actually. Yeah. I had to turn you okay. down again. <laughs> it worked as soon yeah. as I put you up. Okay. Yeah. This oh, yeah. Be um, yeah. I wanted to point out, uh, we have a little bit of live news to cover, but uh, Sash just said that uh, he needs to leave in like 15 minutes, so he wants to do last call for the giveaway now, okay. Um, okay. which is um, prize virtual ticket, keyword BlizzCon in chat. Mm -hmm. So type BlizzCon in the chat if you want to have a chance to win a virtual ticket for BlizzCon. And this virtual ticket, in case you weren't here at the beginning of the show, will include a playable classic demo uh, during yeah. BlizzCon and slightly a couple days after BlizzCon as well. And for World of Warcraft itself, it will include a maybe not very exciting, but cloak and banner for both factions. And you will also get some uh, cool stuff, some goodies from other games, other Blizzard games as well. Yeah. So for live news to run through quickly, because I got a meeting to run to soonish as mm -hmm. well, um, we've got some interesting news on island expeditions. Um, basically, uh, throughout the last few weeks, everyone's like, why don't I never get stuff from island expeditions? I want my cool weapon. I want my cool mount. I want my cool pet. And uh, it really, um, a lot of people have been kind of leaving anecdotal evidence. And it sort of blew up with a post on Reddit that, the way to farm islands efficiently is totally at odds with the way to increase your chances at getting the special loot from the mm -hmm. islands. Exactly. So normally, if you just want to win, you try to sort of blow through it, get your Azerite. Um, but if you want the special rewards, you should kill all the themed mobs, kill all the rares, do these special uh, events, and then at the end, your chances will be higher of getting that type of loot. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like, a loot table with 10 billion things it's like the mob that has pirates up this week the pirates will be themed they will they can give you the loot like you know squawks the pirate mount or the vrykul can give you the plundered blade of northern kings or the vrykul shoulder pads mm -hmm. so if you want to target the islands uh see what the creature type is for that week if you like that creature type make sure to queue and hope you get that island a lot and then do all the special events related to um that mm -hmm. island the way the way that you can uh, see it in a more easier to understand way is that every time you kill a mob imagine that you're looting that mob but right. instead of looting it directly you get the loot at the end of the island exhibition there's also confirmed yeah. people yeah. who have been getting multiple rewards not just one pet maybe yeah. even two pets maybe maybe three maybe a toy and two yeah. pets so basically for every mob that you kill you are looking at that mob's loot table, and if it dropped, you will get it at the end of the island exhibition. So if you are if you want to target specific items, a specific mount, specific pet, specific transmog, then you could look up what kind of mobs uh, actually can drop that. I mean, I guess you could say what, what it drops, yeah. Uh, which themed mobs are um, for in interest for you, and just farm that. Uh, in general, uh, what you want to farm are rares with special names like unique names yeah. and also uh, when you have invasions when you have a bunch of these things like flying in and you get lots of for example pirates those are usually also very good to kill right so we are working on uh using spreadsheets and whatnot we were actually working on updating the island guide to group the various loot by uh enemy theme so you can then quickly see in the future like oh like you know cavalier up what does that mean what can i yeah. get from it uh, yeah. to see if it's a week you really want to farm islands or not. Exactly. Like, it could be, like, this specific pirate has a 1% chance to drop a certain thing. You kill mm -hmm. 100 of them, you're pretty likely to see a drop. Right. Like, it's... Uh, yeah. It's exactly like regular looting, except you get the reward at the end, so it can be a bit confusing. Yeah. Um, this next topic is pretty heartwarming. Uh, I think 
this was probably after last show, but yeah. the uh, author of Deadly Boss Mods, who's the sole dev working on it, uh, Mystical OS, um, he made a post talking about that he'd have to maybe step back his hands on testing and like his computer was broken and he had really bad health issues and he like couldn't afford better medication and he had to live at home and take care of his disabled mother, which is why Deadly Boss Mods was actually a good job uh, for him. But there was all these, it was like really not a good time for him. And he made a post and really think anything would come of it, but it really blew up. And then um, he, um, he actually uh, met all of his Patreon goals and Blizzard even took note and sent him along with the help of MSI um, a brand new computer and a bunch of collectibles. Um, and, you know, it was a re really nice, um, mm -hmm. you know, really nice thing to do, um, really heartwarming. Um, you know, there, there's, there's still a discussion of, like, should it have gotten to this point before Blizzard? Like, you know, what what is the support structure for people making third-party tools? And, you know, should some... You don't want someone talking about using, like, medication for fish in order to have yeah. to you know, get closer to notice you um so it feels like the whole like content creator community could be more sustainable but um obviously you know it is awesome that when he made this post the community came together and you know got so many donations for him for him to meet his patreon goals maybe now he can get more people to help him with the add-ons so it's not just one person trying to like test everything and write everything and like rate it mythic level so um it's just nice to see a happy ending and that the community was so important in helping his uh you know donation bar grow up and hopefully making deadly boss mods more sustainable um in the future for him and having him have a better quality of life and Indeed. more of like a health you know work life balance exactly yeah and i was i was really it was a really nice uh, uh sort of surprise to see that even blizzard reached out like that like i don't know if you saw this one ah the slide just moved away oh. uh, but they they sent him mm. the collector's edition with like everyone's signatures on them and i, I yeah. think it's a cool, really cool little detail that it it shows how there were a lot of people at Blizzard who were involved, not just one person who decided right. to send a package away. Um, there was more thought put into it, and uh, I think that's really sweet. Yeah. So um, that's awesome too. It was awesome news. Yeah. Um, um, back to the also, live game. Yeah, there's also a lot of hot fixes. We're not gonna not, not gonna go into all of them. But uh, I just want to highlight two quickly. One was that if you like achievements, um, clever use of mechanical explosives can now be completed uh, because they hotfixed how the Storm, St Storm Song Valley truffles worked. Uh, so we have, you know, a detailed guide to that. And if you're wondering why this sounds familiar, uh, this is a joke to about the guild Insidia who uh, got the world first on the Lich King, but then they... It was later deemed an exploit because of the use of Saranite bombs, which then rebuilt part of the uh, platform. So mm -hmm. this is a joke uh, to mm -hmm. that achievement, which, uh, I don't know, maybe yeah. kind of gives a chuckle about that. Yeah, I think it's cool. I think it references yeah. to... I I'm surprised there was a reference to a glitch. I mean, to an exploit, <laughs> like, yeah. from a Blizzard's point of view. I don't know why, why they decided to do that but i guess it's cool i mean the fact that they do that means that okay it's okay to laugh about it now it's not too serious that they were exploding so um yeah i think it's cool reference are always nice and blizzard are pretty good at references yeah and uh then the next one is the i think we may have briefly mentioned this before but the anchor weed uh, oh yeah this is a different hotfix for anchor weed Okay, so what is the difference? Or actually, before I think it said it was going to become more common, was it? And now it's yeah. confirmed, is it? Yeah, so the PTR thing we were talking about way at the start of the show was that um, in the patch, the flasks will take less anchor weed to make. Mm -hmm. uh, and this hotfix was that you can now get more anchor weed if you have rank two or three skill for it. All right. So it's like they're uh, approaching the issue from both ways. You get more anchor weed, and then you will need less of it to craft stuff. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm mixing it up because I think I read this because uh, I remember talking about this on stream. So I I, th I think it was because 
it was before the show and then I was confused and thought it was two different news so I was like yeah we talked about this last week but no yeah. I think it was just on my own stream like two yeah. days ago or something um that because I was telling people to quickly sell off their anchor weed <laughs> it's gonna become right. cheaper yeah. because it's more common so if you're one of those people who's bought like thousands of them uh go ahead and start selling them fast because they will get cheaper and um I guess together with them also becoming less needed in 8.1 it'll get even cheaper after that yeah uh so yeah so in closing um you know we just wanted to uh you know just remind you again of the wowhead party and to rsvp for that as a final piece of news uh oh yeah that's still going strong wowhead party uh, day before blizzcon i will be there perk will be there a bunch of other yep. people will be there too and it's um you just have to rsvp it is completely free to go if you want to support you can pay for the ticket which will then give you more things as a bonus uh, for example you get uh if you're over is it 20 in the us or 21 yeah, 21 us uh, 21 yeah. uh you get uh drinking tickets that you can use to get drinks at the bar um i, I don't know if uh, there is an option for people who are younger than that is it is it strictly yeah. 21 plus for the whole thing? Uh, no, there's a special wristband, um, one that's for not drinking and one that is for drinking. Okay. Um, but Fair yeah, enough. we also have special uh, collection uh, packages if you really want to support the party. Mm -hmm. And we have packages that uh, include um, like, you know, some do, do, do. Uh, we have some packages that are have some drink tickets and then mm -hmm. we have other packages that do not have drink tickets, but you get more collectible pins and other gifts. So, you know, if you are into drinking, there's a package for you. If you are more <laughs> you're like drinking. If you were to like more collecting or you're under twenty one, there's a package that doesn't really emphasize like, you know, the socializing uh mm -hmm. adult beverage part of the party mm -hmm. and here's a quick uh, look at the pins that are normally available in in the store in the wowhead shop and uh, it's uh i don't know if it's all of these pins is it all of these pins that are available in one way or another through the yeah tickets? So, so i think the there were different are... tiers of tickets right so some tiers right. include like one pin and then some tickets include all the pins or right so the socialite package which is 50 you get um two drink tickets and one random pin mm -hmm. for a hundred. It's that, but two. Um, and then the collector, which is 125, it's the all ages package, uh, no drink tickets, but you get all 10 pins. Okay. Uh, and that's limited to a hundred people, which um, they're not totally sold out, but they, there is a fair num a number of people that have gotten this. So if you, you know, do want this uh, sign up for it and you have to do this before October 16th. Okay. Got you. Sass will be there too. <laughs> yeah, Sass will be our treasure goblin, like running around with prizes. Mm -hmm. And there's um, uh, there's also uh, wheel spins that you can take part of over there, and um, yeah, a bunch of small stuff. You can, you can look at the different tiers of tickets if you're interested, and if you're not interested, then the regular ticket is yeah. also fine just to attend and be there, yeah, meet, meet it's people. Free. It's free. But if you want, if especially you want if you're around. Line, yeah. Yeah. If you want to skip the line. And like, you know, get a discount on, uh, you know, like all the pins and, you know, support, support the site, um, you know, def definitely consider some of the, uh, other packages, but mm -hmm. you know, it's free. It's free for everyone. Mm -hmm. We're just happy to see fans there. I love that model. Honestly, give like making it free and then giving it an option, especially for people who will buy a drink or two, like you might as well buy the ticket that costs 50 because you will probably spend that much on alcohol anyways. And then you get a bunch of other stuff instead with it yeah uh, uh apparently we've else? had different winners who are not responding to the giveaway uh so i think this is the third or fourth name now i'm not oh, sure no. uh sploob 25 okay i see him responding now sploob 25 yeah. is the winner of the giveaway yeah that means Yay. sas can now be off duty sas can retire yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we had a few questions. I'm sorry that we can't answer them. I actually have a meeting with the with the guide writing team that I have to do. Um, yeah, we're all in different time zones, uh, but I will think about answering them uh, for next week uh, with the show. And you know, grats to Sploob25 uh, finally getting the BlizzCon virtual ticket. Stay tuned on Wowhood social media. We'll be probably doing some more giveaways for the virtual ticket uh, very soon, as mm -hmm. well as all those other cool things that are announced like uh 
We'll be doing some more Captain Crackers. We mm -hmm. have some Artitude posters. I think Annie has a giveaway on her Twitter for these really cool art posters, and we got set a bunch too. So we'll be mm -hmm. you'll be seeing them around in the next month or so on Wowhead giveaways. Mm -hmm. uh, my giveaway is linked straight into the Wowhead or in the uh, Twitch channel. And the special thing about these posters is that they're actually unavailable for purchase because somebody asked in my tweet like, "Hey, so." It in case I don't win, can I buy them instead because I love them? And Artitude actually responded to that person and said, no, nope, these are actually giveaway only. So uh, they're pretty unique in that sense that you can only win them. You cannot buy them. Yeah, and that reminds me, I should probably keep one of the prize ones we were sent so I can put them on the wall because I, I really yeah. love the posters. They're so yeah. pretty. I need to ask Blizzard like, hey, actually, you know, <laughs> maybe I need a copy too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's they look really cool. So um, definitely give it a try to win through my giveaway or the Wowhead giveaway, which is not ongoing right now, but going on soon. Is that what yeah, Sass was Sass was sent this gigantic, I don't know, truck full of like ninety poster rolls. So. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, he has like his own separate um, storage place that has all the prizes because there's so oh, many. Oh really? Oh many wow! Stuff I like for the party. So <laughs> we will we'll probably be giving some of these out on like the BlizzCon prize wheel, but also oh um, yeah, that's you know, a good one. Mm hmm. Probably telling it like, oh, get your virtual ticket and a poster bundle, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm hmm. Sounds great. But yeah, uh, time to wrap up, guys. We uh, we need to let Perk run off to her other duties. She's not yeah. only ours, she's also sometimes with other people, but it's okay, we still love her. <laughs> Thank you guys all for supporting, for hanging out, for following the Twitch channel. If you're not already, you know, following is completely free. Uh, for people who are uh, subscribing or supporting in any other way, people who are subbed using the uh, Wowhead Premium on Wowhead's website, uh, for people who are, you know, actively in the chat, taking part in the discussions or questions and all that stuff. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed what we showed you this time. And let's see if there's a lot more to show for next week. Maybe there'll be another big PTR update with more models. We'll see. And um, yeah. yeah, whatever is up for next week, we'll cover yep. it for you Should guys. Should be a fun show. Maybe some mm -hmm. more BlizzCon announcements too. Maybe we'll have yeah. a schedule or a floor plan at this point. Mm -hmm. And probably virt more virtual tickets to give away next week as well. Yep. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Yep. Thank you guys Bye. so much for hanging out. Should we go for the high five? Yeah, let's go for and the We have time five. for a high five. Okay, awesome. Okay, yep. All right. Three, two, one. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks Look at those Pepe high fives. Pepe is Pepe like, even looking. Look oh. at that. Yeah. <laughs> he is already. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. And yeah. see you guys next week, same time. On time, hopefully. Not late like this time, but yeah. Yep. See you guys. Right. Yeah. Bye. Bye. -bye.